Immigration is tough. It always has been. Because on the one hand, uh, I think we are naturally uh, a, a people that wants to help others. At the same time, uh, we're a nation state. We have borders. The idea that we can just have open borders is something that uh, I think, as a practical matter, is, is unsustainable. The way we solve this problem is to have a smarter, more efficient, more effective immigration system. Borders are such a ubiquitous part of human society that we rarely give much thought to their existence, nor do we question why they are needed. Borders can serve as both physical and symbolic markers to demarcate nation territories. Open borders can be used to foster trade, cultural exchange, and unrestricted leisure travel. Closed borders are ostensibly used to protect a nation's interests, but in reality, have more to do with hoarding resources than anything else. Though the idea of borders makes sense on a personal level, for example, a fence around your home, it makes far less sense on a global scale. This becomes particularly clear when you look past our history of relatively stable borders. The borders of the United States, for example, has changed several times in history. Historically speaking, a country's borders has been determined by that country's ability to enforce its will on others. Might makes right, basically. Though some have made the argument that borders are violence, that is not the prevailing sentiment today by any means. Even among some who consider themselves to be left-leaning, the idea of closed borders seems like a no-brainer. Decades of fear-mongering about immigrants have conditioned people to naturally agree with the notion that we need to carefully restrict and monitor those who enter the country. This, despite the fact that the preponderance of empirical research suggests that immigrants actually commit crimes at lower rates than native-born citizens. It takes a level of intentionality to unlearn the xenophobic talking points that have seeped into the public consciousness about immigrants and the need for so-called border control. Before explaining the positives of having open borders, let's quickly debunk some of the talking points against it. Economic concerns. Proponents of closed borders make the case that open borders will result in an oversupply of labor, depressing wages as competition for jobs increase. This argument completely ignores several factors. Immigrants are more likely than US-born citizens to start their own business. Immigrants often fill less desirable jobs that native-born citizens are reticent to do themselves. And lastly, an oversupply of labor is a critique of capitalism not open borders. Security and crime. As alluded to earlier, the argument here is essentially one that revolves around the notion that we don't know who these people are. In addition to the fact that immigrants commit less crime, the idea that immigrant crime is somehow different or worse makes no sense. Social welfare burden. This is probably the most laughable and unserious concern trolling regarding immigrants. The argument is that immigrants overconsume our social safety nets without adequately contributing to it. Firstly, undocumented persons are not able to use the vast majority of social services as they lack the proper documentation. This is particularly cruel as many of them can obtain jobs with fraudulent paperwork, meaning that they pay taxes, social security, and FICA without the ability to benefit. This is an open secret. The IRS has no problem collecting taxes from illegitimate social security numbers, but the door does not swing the other way. Cultural preservation. It is hard not to take this argument as being blatantly xenophobic and racist. So-called cultural preservationists argue that mass immigration can erode a country's traditions, values, language, etc. This argument does not require debunking. It is self-defeating. Rule of law and sovereignty. This argument for closed borders basically amounts to, this is our country and we have the right to keep you out. Much of the land that we currently call the United States of America was literally stolen from the Native Americans that preceded the European colonizers and the rest was stolen from Mexico. The arrogance, irony, and hypocrisy of refusing to share stolen land 
is truly mind-boggling. It is not merely enough to debunk the incorrect, harmful, and mostly xenophobic talking points against open borders. The truth remains that open borders are not merely a neutral proposition. It represents the opportunity to perform a net positive in society. Let's examine some realistic and tangible benefits to having open borders. Economic growth and prosperity. By ensuring unrestricted movements of goods, services, and labor, we would drastically increase opportunities for economic growth on a global scale. Consumers and talent would no longer be geographically static. And ironically, that would likely increase temporary migration across the world rather than permanent relocation. Improved global equality. As alluded to in the previous point, a world with open borders would eventually result in a global marketplace that has greater parity in terms of both resources and talent. The opportunity to immediately pursue a potential opportunity, as opposed to spending decades mired in bureaucratic red tape to obtain citizenship, would tangibly and immediately change the lives of the less fortunate worldwide. Cultural exchange and diversity. It has often been posited that much of racist and xenophobic beliefs tend to perpetuate due to ignorance and lack of exposure. Obviously, distilling bigoted mindsets down to a singular cause is short-sighted, but it is clearly a contributing factor. Open borders will foster a greater exchange of cultural expressions, traditions, and ideas. It is human nature at times to fear what we do not know or understand. The sheer increased exposure of open borders would help with this. Addressing labor market demands. Labor shortages exist in many parts of the world. Amazingly, different parts of the world have different shortages and labor needs. An engineer may live in a locality with a fairly saturated market. Rather than suffer through unemployment or underemployment, said engineer could take their talents elsewhere globally where there might actually be a shortage. Again, this kind of free movement would eventually have the effect of creating labor parity worldwide. Human rights and dignity. Due to constant capitalistic indoctrination, Americans often forget that human lives and the right to lead a dignified existence is a crucial one. The free market is not interested in the well-being of global citizens and being born in unfortunate circumstances should not be a death penalty for innocent humans born on the wrong tectonic plates. Open borders ensures and maximizes this basic human right. By acknowledging the reality that we all live in an interconnected world, we can fully maximize the well-being of all people born on this planet, and not just those fortunate to be born on colonized land and resources. Furthermore, even from a selfish perspective, unlocking the potential of everyone to move freely benefits all of us, even those of us already born into advantageous situations. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you making it this far into the video. I have some really cool and interesting stuff, uh, longer form stuff coming up for you guys. So that's probably going to be a while I'm not going to post for a while. So please subscribe so you don't miss out. Hit the bell notification if you can. Also, if you want to support, that would really, really, really help me out because I'm trying to grind and do this full time. Patreon.com slash Progressive Writer. And, you know, leave a comment. Let me know what you thought about it. Thank you so much.